If you watch our channel, you know that we talk about radicalization of Muslims in Canada, including at mosques. We have a whole series called CanadianJihad.ca. Our expert there is Jonathan Halevi, who speaks Arabic and Farsi and other Muslim languages. But another expert we talk to from time to time is our friend Marc Lebouy with the website Point de Bascule, which is French for the tipping point. And he joins us now from Montreal. Marc, great to see you again. Thank you for having me, Israel. Well, it's good to have you here because I want to talk about the interesting case of Hussein Hamdani. He's a Muslim Canadian and he does two things and uh, I want to show you a little bit of a clip of both of them and I want to ask you about the news about him. Hussein Hamdani is involved in Dawah, that's proselytization, that's getting people to become Muslim or if they're Muslim already to become, them, to become even more Muslim. Here's a quick clip of him talking to a Muslim student about the importance of bringing people to convert to Islam. Take a look at this. The people could just suspend their stereotypes, uh, pick up a text, meet a Muslim, come to the Islamic mm -hmm. Dawah Center here, mm. meet with other Muslims so that they can establish a relationship with their Lord. That's the number one priority. In addition to proselytizing Islam, he also presents himself as a de-radicalizer, someone that Canadians can rely on to make sure fervent Muslims don't get violent. Here's an advertorial, really a propaganda piece, produced for him by the Globe and Mail, portraying him as the gentlest soul around. Take a look at this Globe and Mail production. When I sit with them, I tell them that I connect with them on their injustice. I, I agree with them. I, I subscribe to the same injustices that they see and, and the desire to want to bring positive change. And I remind them the stories of the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, Whenever he was faced with an opportunity for vengeance or revenge, he always rejected that. Well, Mark, I want to ask you, is the Hussein Hamdani in these two videos, I mean, this Hussein Hamdani that we've just saw managed to get himself appointed to high positions in our government. Let's talk about that, and then I'll ask you about the news that got him fired. So before we talk about the, the, the news of his firing, tell me what agencies, what government places was Hussein Hamdani invited to go? Well, the, basically, uh, the, 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 the Canada, the Public Safety Canada, is basically has created what we call a cross-cultural community roundtable, and Hamdani is one of the original uh, members of this cross-cultural uh, uh, roundtable that was basically initiated by the Liberal government at the time. Then later on, but prior to that, what's, what's interesting is Hamdani was already a mobilizer, a militant of uh, the, the North American Muslim Students Association. Very important to notice that Washington-based national uh, or North American Muslim Students Association, and he participated, he was one of the contributors to a guide that literally called to Islamize, these are his term, not mine, Islamize the campuses, the university campuses. Two things that are interesting about his, 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 his notion of Islamization, he says that the, the, the Muslim Students Association should take control of other Muslim students agencies that have uh, very strong funding capabilities. And the second thing is also influence uh, uh, other uh, students' bodies that have a very important role in politics inside uh, university campuses. And um, there was another player uh, who also contributed to this document called Wahil Adara, who was at the head of the Muslim Association of Canada later on, also linked with Irfan Canada, all these, these things. But also after resigning from the Muslim, the MAC in uh, 2012, late 2012, became a key advisor to the Muslim Brotherhood Morsi government, to Mohammed Morsi. Really? Himself. So, I mean, Muslim, Mohammed Morsi, of course, the Muslim Brotherhood declared a terrorist group by Egypt uh, on trial for, uh, for, for violence. So you're saying that exactly. people who were involved in the Islamization of Canadian campuses later went on to work with this terrorist group. That's incredible. Now, um, tell me what his role was, Hussein Hamdani, in well, the Ministry of Public Safety. Was, it just, was he just window dressing for show? Was he shown any sensitive information? What do we know about his access to Canadian police, security, intelligence, military confidences? 
Well, one of the things that we can, I, I will like, uh, I will give you an example, recent example. One of them, uh, uh, the Minister McKay basically highlighted the work and the role of the community, the Transfer Community Roundtable, to give the pulse of what's happening within the communities in Canada. So, but one of the a clear indication of how there's a correlation to be made about the advisory role that they play, like uh, Hussein and Dani represent, is supposed to represent the Muslim community. He gave a presentation in front of what at the time was the head of uh, national security, uh, Vic Tays. It was a PowerPoint presentation. And in this PowerPoint presentation, basically Hamdani says that we should do like the, Uni like the United States under the Obama administration. And in order to describe the Islamic threat, we uh, should not use Islamic terms. That's a very simplest, uh, simplified way of describing it. But these, there's a very clear PowerPoint presentation that says this. And the person that presented this PowerPoint presentation to the Muslim community was a man uh, by the name of Syed, who's the lawyer of Irfan Canada, who got its, its charitable status revoked, who also brought Stockwell Day to court, and who's now listed officially as a terrorist organization. Wow, so, so these people are one degree or two degrees of separation from actual terrorists, whether it's the Muslim Brotherhood or exactly. funneling money. Now, so this is and a then, fellow, and, go, go and, ahead. And then Ezra, mm -hmm. there's also a history. I mean, even though we spoke about this manual in 1996, what we can say is since 96, is activism and mobilization never stopped. So for example, in 2003, he brought in what is considered to be the most important uh, Islamic event in Canada called the Revival of the Islamic Spirit in 2003. And his organization basically organized this, this, this That's event. That's that massive, massive convention in Toronto, e e extremely fundamentalist Islam. This is where Justin Trudeau went to speak. That is an enormous organization. So here's a fellow who, as you say, devised the strategy to Islamify campuses, to make sure all Muslim students on campus become politicized and not just sort of melt away into Canadian society, but to shore themselves up and become politically uh, Islamified. He had access to senior uh, officials, including Vic Taves himself, tried to get Islamic language out of discussions of terrorism. What finally broke the camel's back? Why was he finally sacked from his position in high office? We're almost out of time, Mark, but tell me yeah. what, what is it that caused well, the government to kick him out? When you look at the chronology of the last decade, he's been, for, for example, when he started the Islamic revival, the sponsor for this event, when he was at the head of the organization, the Yaya Foundation that organized this, the sponsor for the event was WAMI, who got its charity status revoked because of ties with uh, terror funding towards Al-Qaeda uh, linked organization. Then later on in 2005 became the advisor, 2006, uh, two other organizations that he's also uh, led to are organization that transferred funds to Irfan Canada. Now here's a guy who's supposed to advise the government on, uh, on in legal terms, what could be uh, threats to our national security not things that are necessarily illegal, but what could lead to threats. And he's basically a very unlucky guy. He's always falling on, on the, right the wrong type of people. Just recently, last year, in an organization called the NASR, they promoted uh, the, uh, the, a conference by Siraj Wahaj, a guy who basically called on doing the jihad with Uzi guns in the streets of the United States, alongside ISNA, a couple of weeks after a branch of ISNA lost its charity status for being involved in another uh, uh, terrorist su uh, supporting activity. Hmm. So, uh, and the other thing also, just recently, he was part of a huge uh, problematic, uh, there was something called CISO. It's a, it's a Ontario based organization that helps integrate immigrants. There was a huge fraud in there. There was an instance, a, 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 an instance where the judge basically was alarmed by Hamdani's, uh, by Hamdani's uh, lack of, of, uh, of, of, um, of response. So, for example, there was a, a person inside CISO that went to go see Hamdani, and it seems like this person was basically suggesting that they should alter 
the bookings of this organization. Well, Mark, there's so many angles yes. here. Folks can get all the details I'm at Plan de Bascule. I know you mentioned ISNA, the Islamic Society of North America, and IRFAN, and all these different groups. That's a real alphabet soup of organizations. For folks who want to go deep, they can find it all on Plan de Bascule. Thank you for bringing the news. It's incredible what Hussein Hamdani has been able to do with the Islamification of Muslim students in Canada. As you're right, it's it's awfully unlucky that he always seems one or two degrees of separation away from groups linked to terrorism. I'm glad he's no longer has uh, the red carpet rolled out for him in the high offices of this country. But he's still out there working every day to proselytize Islam, recruit people to Islam, and turn ordinary Muslim Canadians into radicals. I'm glad you're ringing the alarm for us. Mark Labouille, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Ezra. Bye-bye.